Welcome to the First Take Podcast, where every now and then some of our staff and friends will get together to talk about different things going on in our world. In this episode, we answer the question, how could a loving God allow suffering and evil? If you enjoy this podcast, bop that like button and subscribe to catch upcoming episodes. If you really enjoy this podcast, share it with your friends. Whether you're listening or watching, you'll be glad you tuned in. Here's episode four. I thought I was a child. And I oh, like Lord. A child. So what do you but, think as now? But now then you're I, at Gramps. <laughs> then I became a man and skipped forward to grandfatherhood. You ready to go? There it is. That feels like the start. I <laughs> love it. Let's buy with it a little bit. Come on. All right. Welcome back to the First Take Podcast. We hope you are having a great day. I'm John. I'm joined by my cousin, Seth, my little cousin, long lost cousin, Seth, and Peepaw and Gramps. They're with us, too. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want me to yeah. do that, but I did it anyway. I'm just joking. It's Brian and Bo. Hello. Welcome, guys. How are y'all? I'm not, yeah, I'm not claiming that. Other yeah, day. yeah, yeah. We're going to leave that behind. I didn't hear you. What? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. We are not a sponsored podcast at this moment. At this Did you moment, know that? I, I definitely, I've listened <laughs> to the content. I know. <laughs> we are not a sponsored podcast. It's going to happen. But I will say, you know, if there was ever someone who needed to be our first podcast, our first podcast sponsor, it is Westlake Wings. All four of us. Went there. So we're going to give them a, a, a free yes. promo today. Free promo. All four of us and producer Butterworth over yep. there went to Westlake Wings yesterday. Tell tell me a little bit about what you experience while you're at Westlake Wings eating those hot and spicy wings. If you haven't had those, got, like you need to go check them out. But what do y'all experience when you go there? I, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to put into words, you know, it's, it's, uh, as my son says, I want to ask him when the first time he went before I did, he, I said, what, what is it? And he said, it's hot wings with a side of Chinese food, you know? So <laughs> that's, that's what it is. What could go wrong? What there, could right? go wrong? I guess. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. um, I don't know. The number 16 is just joy. Yeah. It's joy. It's bliss. And you know, the thing is, is you can't compare it to like Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings isn't even on the same. They're not even playing the same game. Mm-mm. No, I mean, the, they have flavors. That's it. They don't have chicken wings. They have sauces. Yeah. You yeah. talking about Buffalo Wild Buffalo, Wings. Yeah, Wild yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So yeah. These, these wings are the wings of yes. Southwest Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. So Westlake Wings, it's across from Round Top Burger. Which is also good. Yeah, yeah. That could be our second sponsor. Maybe they could do like together. Brought to you by Westlake Wings and Round Top Burger. Okay. <laughs> we'll move on yes. to the actual content of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, Brian, yesterday or this past weekend, uh, you tackled a pretty tough subject, pretty tough, you know, thing to, to talk about and think about. Um, and it was a message about how, if God is good, how can he allow suffering and evil that we all face? And, you know, we had a few questions come out of that sermon and, and some things that probably a lot of people are wondering. Uh, but I want to start with, you know, you doing what you've been doing the last few weeks, you know, okay. give us a little bit of a synopsis. You know, what did you talk about? Uh, bring us up to speed if maybe okay. we didn't hear that sermon. Yeah. So it's a great, it's a question that, you know, people have wrestled with for gosh, ever since Christianity has been a thing is if there's this good God, how come bad things happen to good people? It's another way it gets expressed. <clears throat> so the main idea was this, is that, look, if you, if you have a God who's big enough, transcendent enough, wise enough, powerful enough that he could stop any evil or suffering or pain from coming into the world. Then you also at the same time have a God who's powerful enough, big enough, wise enough and loving enough and good enough that he could just possibly have the reason to allow it, but we can't see it just because, because that's the ultimate issue that and that's the way the question ultimately gets said is if there's this good God, how come there's all this pointless that's the key word, pointless suffering and evil in the world. And the answer is just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. There could be a point to it. And in fact, I believe that there is. That's good. And, uh, you know, so we're going to talk about some things and the questions, they really were covered in the sermon for the most part. Okay. Um, but I think it's important for us to just have an open discussion and, and dive maybe a little deeper or even cover what you covered in the sermon and just reiterate it. 
and just kind of talk through it. So, um, well, yeah. And hearing from y'all's perspective too, rather than just my voice again, I think that that'll add to the conversation. 100%. And so, Bo, I want to, I want to start with you and we'll kind of kick off of what Brian was just really talking about. Cause it's a big question. You know, if, if God is good and he's all powerful all at the same time, you know, if, um, you know, how could he allow, you know, if, if he couldn't make a difference, how could he allow so much evil in the world? Like, why is there so much evil? I think what we're going to do today is continue restating the same question over and over mm-hmm. and trying to give different <laughs> perspectives of it. Uh, and so I, I want to begin by saying that I, th- I think if we have a God or you who's listening, have a God that you understand everything about him, that you think you have him figured out, well, you've created a God fashioned in your own image. For yourself, yeah. And so the truth is that we will never truly understand, as Brian's already mentioned, but why is there so much evil and suffering is is literally a question that's 4,000 plus years old. Mm. And uh, from my perspective, I can't really give an, uh, an answer to that that I think everybody's going to understand, even in a room of you know just us six people. Yeah. Um, but I would I want to go on record and say that I have learned that I have learned great things by going through difficulty in both about myself and about God. Yep. But I have rarely learned anything significant about myself or God mm. whenever I'm just easing through life with no difficulty, no struggle, and no suffering. Uh, And so uh, I know that there's a purpose in it. Now, if you're looking at it from your perspective or someone else's perspective, they may have a grand question of, from my perspective, that doesn't make sense because something horrific happened to me. Sure. Uh, And so I would just go with, I would apply my sentiment to them, their situation as well. But I'm doing it from a lens, quite honestly, that's a little different, you know, as a, as a believer, um, as someone who tries to study and learn the word, the scripture. And you got to look at God across the ages, not just in your moment. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And so you, you look at him whenever he created men and in in us in, as his creation in our image, in it, not in our image, but in his image. Yeah. Uh, and to be his own image bearer. And he did that with love and intimacy uh, as a giant part of it. And then even his own select people, the the Israel people, uh, the Hebrews, they, they went into bondage through his hand so that they could then understand that they needed to come back to him. And so difficulty comes into my life to reveal something about God and about myself. Um, and so I feel like I, I feel like we need volumes of books to answer this question. Yeah, sure. And I, I think you know if we if we look at suffering and evil, those are really kind of two different things. I mean, suffering yeah. comes from evil, but sometimes suffering is just us not having a great season of life, or yeah. you know, going through some things. And and it, it's it's hard to call that like real evil because there's some horrific evils out there. And so mm-hmm. I can see in my own life that you know, in times of suffering, like I've been through some things with my kids, um, you know, back when they were babies and even here recently, um, you know, health wise, that has been what I would call suffering. And, you know, it it was important during those times to like, for me to gain perspective. And I'll tell you this back when they were babies, I wasn't really walking with the Lord. And it was hard for me to gain perspective in those moments. It took a lot longer. It took a lot more suffering Mm -hmm. uh, for me to gain perspective on those moments and see like what God was actually trying to do uh, in those moments with me. Whereas here recently I I am walking closer with the Lord. And so it it wasn't, it didn't take near as long for me to gain that perspective. And so I think that's an important thing for us to kind of look into and and we can get to, you know, more of the evil horrific stuff in a, in a minute, but like, you know, the suffering, how do, how do you gain perspective in those moments? Well, I notice what both of y'all said is you came to it with an understanding of who God is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's where it settles. Um, you you got to make that decision before you're, before you're there. Yeah. Because once you're there, it's really difficult to make that decision. And when you're in it, then you have to go back. You, got, you can't trust your emotions at that point. You have to begin to say, 
All right, I'm going to go back to the decision I made when my when I was of sound mind <laughs> and <laughs> and perhaps sound body. If if you're experiencing, because um, what you're talking about with your kids is is it, that suffering, you know, that it's it's nothing. I I can't find a reason why you know nobody did anything to them. No, sure. no there you know this is just a natural um, thing that happened yeah, or yeah. an unnatural thing that happened, you know, right. whatever you want to call it you know, kind of like the hurricanes and mm -hmm. all that kind of other stuff. It's just, uh, nobody did that to anybody. It just, right. it's there. It's a rough season. So, but you have to have that perspective. So, but, um, and maybe in, and John, you can steer us differently if you want. I kind of would like to kind of hear y'all's perspective on that other kind of, um, I would call it evil, which yeah. is person to person. People do bad things to people. Kind of give me y'all's perspective on where, freedom, free will comes into that. And do you think that's an important issue to bring into this? Absolutely. Kind of, yeah. That's a question I would like, John, Seth, y'all chime in on that. John, think, chime in it, on yeah, that. I, Tag I, think, in. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really is where it, it, it begins is that um, we are free people and we are, you know, uh, there are choices that are made every day in this world. And so, yeah, th there's a difference between natural evil and moral evil, like you're talking right. about. And that moral evil is that person to person evil where um, when we make those choices, when we make those decisions, um, we often hurt others around us. Wow. <laughs> uh, my phone just rang for those of you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Pro producer Butterworth. Yes. Uh, for example, <laughs> leaving your phone on there in a podcast. Uh, but no, I, I think that that is um kind of where it starts and you know the the hard part is looking for someone to blame outside of the person making those choices and like you know when we start looking to a higher power like when we start looking to god hey how could you allow this to happen you're all powerful you could have mm -hmm. stopped this from happening to me um it takes it we're we're putting the onus on someone who didn't actually you know do what we're talking about yeah. And so it's, it's a tough yeah. thing, Seth. I don't know how you feel. Yeah. So he, he mentioned you have to have an understanding of who God is under sound mind and, and whatnot. And I would just to add to that in terms of what you're saying, I have to have an understanding of what we are as humans mm. under sound mind. And, you know, um, like I'm just as capable as anybody else of doing evil. I'm right. just as equally capable um, of doing evil as anyone else on the planet. And um, I know that, that, you know, probably we can cover that up with, you know, um, behaving and, and, and like we can measure sin and we can measure evil all we want. Um, uh, I just, that's, that's how I reconcile it in my mind um, that I'm just as capable as anyone else. And so that, that adjusts my perspective personally. Yeah. And so everyone is just as equally as committing evil. And so when it's committed to you, I think that that, changes the way that we can respond maybe i don't know i think the question we're asking is also wrong like uh not we at this table but like sometimes when we're trying to figure this stuff out um why does why does why do bad things happen to good people mm -hmm. that question is probably phrased wrong right the the better question is why do good things happen to bad people because all of us have that you know we we've all sinned there's only been yep. one guy who doesn't deserve any bad to happen and so uh, I think just having a perspective on who you are as a person and, and that sort of thing um, could could change maybe the way that you ask the questions to try to figure out what's going on in your life. And I, I would think that if, if Job Job's wife, in chapter two of the book of Job, you know, we believe is the oldest book in the Bible. So that makes this question one of the oldest questions ever. Um, Job's wife literally says, Job, won't you just curse God and die? Get this over with. And Job's reply to her was, listen, if we're going to accept all this good from God, because he was probably one of the wealthiest men alive in that day. He had servants, yeah. he had cattle, he had children, he had an estate. Um, if we're going to accept all of this good, then why would we not accept this bad? Um, and so perspective is a giant player in how we look at this question. And it's going to determine our scorecard, too. We flew into Atlanta a few weeks ago, and uh, as we started descending through the clouds, you know, you feel the little bumps and everything. Mm -hmm. And so it was pleasant above the clouds, 
and you could see the cloud cover just the way it, it was laid out. But when we started going through the clouds, you could start to see the development of the landscaping and the towns. And it was very clear when we were arriving in, in into Atlanta because all of a sudden these roads that looked like they were miles away or miles apart from one another, they were on top of one another. Mm-hmm. And so it's all about perspective. God sees life through a completely different lens than we do. Yeah. And, um, and I'm telling you, I want to give some hope that this question can really be answered and we can have some satisfaction in it. Uh, but it's also important for us to understand his perspective is different. Uh, his thoughts, his ways are higher and different than our own. Uh, and it's and it's not to diminish this, but I mean, if I had to give a gut level, if somebody says, why did something horrific happen to my child mm-hmm. or to my sister or to my son, I got to be honest and go, don't know exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, there's uh, a benefit in being able to wrestle with that, though. Um, yes. And, and uh, a comfort. Obviously, you're not going to want to say this in a moment, but like there's a comfort from being able to come to the realization that I don't know, but someone has to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so I, I would just say, and I don't, I don't really know, but I know that in my life, that me understanding that there's a difference of perspective and then having the understanding that God not only pursues me, but loves me, is more passionate about loving me uh, than I would ever be more passionate about loving him. Uh, and so he's ultimately kind and gracious and merciful. And there's a level that you got to just trust. Yeah. And trust comes by way of experience. And I, I think I think perspective, that word is probably a good thing for us to really dive into just for a minute. And Brian, I want you to go a little further because you talked about this in your message, but I'd like mm-hmm. for you to talk about it again, maybe maybe go a little further. And if we are talking about perspective, we have to admit that there might be a perspective outside of our own. Yes. And in this case, it's God's perspective. And so the question is, if God is all powerful, why doesn't he stop some of this stuff, especially the really horrific things? Yeah. And so dive into, you know, God's perspective on this being so much different than ours obviously is. Yeah, I mean, it's the difference between like Bo's blind without these glasses. I don't know why he doesn't put them on. <laughs> Only know, to read. Gramps. So, um, you see. but it's the difference between, I, I used this illustration a few months back on a different message, but it's the same thing of when my son was climbing one of the old oak trees and walking around on them, Thatcher's climbing that in New Orleans and he was walking around that thing and he was trying to find a way down and he couldn't. He was like, I need some help. I'm stuck. I can't <laughs> figure this out. And so I got under the tree and from where he was, he couldn't see things that I could see. And so I told him, I would say, Hey, go over here. And then, then you'll be able to go over here. And then he, and I was able to guide him down, um, out of the tree safely rather than just from his perspective, his only option was to just leap and hope for the best. So, um, I think that's the difference in perspectives is we see things like Thatcher was seeing them in that tree of like, well, listen, I guess I'm just going to leap out here and just hope for the best. When honestly, if we would just have the right perspective, make the decision ahead of time that, listen, God is good. God is wise and he wants what's best for me. And that I'm going to be better at life the closer I stay to Jesus. So I'm going to stay close to him and that be through community, um, engaging with other people who will keep me close to Jesus, because that's obviously a necessity. I think you see in the Bible and through making decisions again, ahead of time that Mm. these things are true, regardless of circumstances, these things are true. And those are the perspectives that allow you, like I was able to have that perspective of my son. That's the, um, that's how God sees the world is he is outside of time. He's not in Mm -hmm. this. He's not moving around in this. He's not figuring it out as he goes. He's seen the, the, the ending. He's seen the beginning because he stands outside of it. So he's got a perspective that we don't have. And we have to, as a uh, uh, you know, mentor of mine is, would say is you, you have to trust his heart even when you don't understand his hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you just have to. And I mean, I'm going to ask a question that may not have an answer because I think it's a question that someone who is dealing with some one of these horrific sins, uh, you know, like their child was molested or raped or, or murdered or anything like that, it, they might come back with, are you saying that that was in God's plan? Um, you know, how how would you respond to someone who's in that level of hurt and pain 
Because I mean, that's I, it. yeah, I wouldn't respond. I would just say, I would like Bo is like, I, I can't explain that, but I can be here for you. Yeah. I will walk with you every step through this as much as you will allow me to. I will walk with you through this because I'm not going to try to explain that. I'm just not. Yeah. That, and that's why I said it might not have an answer, but you know, yeah, I, I the know answer that. is to be a friend, not to <laughs> try to logic them to death. <laughs> that's the answer is to put your arm around their shoulder, not, not use words to try to help them make sense of it. Yeah. So there, there's, uh, there's logical confusion when it comes to this question, yeah. mm -hmm. but there's also emotional confusion that yep. when it comes to this question. And what we're talking about there is more of the emotional confusion Absolutely. side. Absolutely. And so on emotional confusion, there's really no answers. There's no good answers, at least. Uh, you know, sometimes there is, but you know, a lot of times there's not. And so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, walking with somebody and just being there for them. Yeah. So and, like Job, yeah. the best thing his three friends did is they came and they just sat with him for a week. Yeah. They didn't say a word. That was the best thing they did the whole time. And uh, and again, look, I said it in the message that sometimes bad friends are better. Than, or, or, I think maybe a lot of times even people that are going to give you bad advice are better than nothing because those people still force you to consider what's real here. All can think. Yeah. And they, those three guys, they didn't have, you know, they didn't understand things from God's perspective, but they forced Job to answer some stuff. Then he had to sort through reality still, which ultimately led him to be able to answer God in, in those questions or, or, or be able to answer to, to have an experience with God in those questions. So mm -hmm. community is vital being around other people, not isolating, because that's often our natural response of this is hurt. I'm hurt. I'm going to get out of the situations. And it's, 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 and it's understandable. It's natural. It's self-protection. Mm -hmm. I don't I want to remove myself from any other situation where I could possibly be hurt because I get it. E e and people, their hearts are pure. Their hearts mean well, but they say weird things <laughs> in these yeah. moments that just don't help. Um, and sometimes it's better to just say, I don't have an answer, but I can be a friend. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just, yeah. I'll sit here and you, and listen to whatever you would like to say. Yeah, if, no, if, if I go back in time and, and it's not a heartstring story for anybody really other than me, I go back in time to preaching my own mother's funeral in August of 2001. And all I could think about, what do I, so I'm dealing with my own grief. There's a room full of people. My mother was widely loved uh, because of her uh, job and just influence in our small community. Um, so what do I say to these people? How do I help them get through this moment in a moment that I'm struggling with too? And I, I, three points because I'm a Baptist guy. I had three points. <laughs> And did the, you have a poem? Too? Three points and an illustration. No, actually, right? someone read a poem before <laughs> I did go. it. So a poem or a hymn, baby. That's right. And so, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so the three things I told them uh, that they needed in their life that I was looking for in my life was the first thing is they needed uh, comfort. They needed to experience God's comfort in their life. Mm -hmm. That only comes through Jesus Christ. That's right. And then... The third thing that I told them is that they needed to be involved in community. Um, and so I think community is a game changer whenever it comes to dealing with stuff. You know, you know, I, I, we have a home group meets in our living room and our conversation Sunday night based upon the weekend's message. Uh, and and I, I, it just naturally just drove itself towards how powerful community has been in people's lives. Yeah. Ours too. Um, and so we we talked for more time than we would normally talk. And I'm serious, 90% of it was about the impact that community has brought. Even during COVID when we we were, you know, away from everybody, you know, they were thankful for Zoom, just getting together, you know, electronically and, and being able to talk through issues and life and faith. Uh, and these are real people with real issues. Yeah. Um, and so... Community is a giant part of uh, not only maybe not getting an answer, but in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to deal with a lack of one. That's right. And yeah. it's more than coping. Community that helps you cope is probably going to go away. Mm. Community that connects you to real questions in real life is going to stick with you for a long time. Yeah. And so uh, I agree. Job's friends. Uh, just the present. Yeah, just being there. Just well, being there. One of the things I learned, you know, 
because I've been I've helped people through it. I've been through it. And just telling your story of when you've been through similar situations and, and I've been able to tell people like, hey, there, there were times where I did had to go through these things. I wasn't walking closely with the Lord. I wasn't following Jesus with my life. And I'll I'm exhibit A for why by staying close to Jesus keeping in that community, why that makes such a huge difference. And so sometimes just telling your story, being there for them, but not giving them any advice, but just telling them what you've been through, yeah. what you've experienced. I think that helps us to learn and just being involved with other people. It helps me to realize that I'm not the only person in the world that struggles with a circumstance. Sure. And not only am I not the only person that struggles with a circumstance, Chances are, if you want to start measuring something, there's a lot of other people out there that have it a lot worse off than me. I had a baseball coach one time that was battling cancer, and every time he would come back from MD Anderson, he would talk about how bad the people off were mm-hmm. at MD Anderson. And I'm like, dude, you have cancer. Like, you, you may die. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. you're, you may die if this doesn't work. Yeah. And he, he would, and so I don't know, just just the perspective of, um, of that is humbling. It's actually a therapeutic technique that is used a lot. Like when someone's not feeling very good about themselves and not really having a good time in life, you know, they'll tell people go and serve others, Mm -hmm. go and make your life about someone besides yourself. Because sometimes when we're in the middle of it, we can get real self-absorbed. We can get those blinders on and like everything becomes about us. Mm -hmm. And then the enemy starts to talk into that and he starts to make us believe lies about ourselves and about our circumstances and about God, Yeah, you know, in those situations. And so it's important to do exactly what you're talking about. Make your life about someone else when you're in the middle of these circumstances. Yeah. Go ahead. uh, I wouldn't normally uh, share someone's name, but um, I have a friend who's uh, much older than me, uh, named Junior Hill. Junior is an evangelist. He's, uh, he's unable to travel now because of age and stuff. But something happened to Brother Junior in the 60s. And uh, as a seminary student, um, he showed up to a little town in southern Mississippi to find out that he had been fired from his church and no one had told him anything. And that broke him, broke his heart, you know, just a difficult time for his life. And he went 30 plus years, not necessarily understanding why that happened to him. Now he didn't live in the puddle, but what, what happened that made him really discover is an area pastor from Northern Alabama drove into his parking or drove into his home and said, brother junior, I I need to talk to somebody, you know, I'm going through something that I'm sure somebody like you has never gone through. My church just fired me. And Junior said in the moment, that moment on his front porch, he knew that what happened 30 plus years ago happened for multiple reasons, but one of those reasons was standing in front of him. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to say in in his own, you know, Northern Alabama accent, dear brother, (laughs) I'm sorry to say that I completely understand and so there's a, events in our life that don't only benefit us, but if we're in community, they can have tremendous power in other people's lives through story and transparency. And so we could all tell stories like that probably from our own lives or from other people who have told us their stories that have been, both empowered us and pressed us forward. Several of those kinds of stories came up in our small group where yes. people were talking about, and I'm talking about some really tough stuff that they had been through in their life. But later, much, much later, years, decades later, they were given the opportunity to share the love of God and how he brought them through it with someone who was currently going through it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's, that's just really amazing. Um, you know, real quick to close, why, why have evil at all? Uh, you know, one of the questions we got asked is if, if we agree on all of this, like, why did, why did God, uh, allow evil to enter the picture at all? What, what happened there? Brian. <laughs> um, well, that goes back to my free will question. Yeah. So he could have stopped it. He could have not, he could have put a stop to it, but he would essentially would have created uh, robots yeah. who he just pushes buttons and they do what he wants. So he didn't do that. He chose to create free creatures who make free decisions, morally free decisions. And we have chosen 
to not go his direction. We have chosen to do our own thing, be our own safe, try to be our own saviors, try to be our own gods, do our own thing. Mm -hmm. When we do that, we inflict evil and hurt upon other, upon, upon people, you know, that's just, that's what happens. So, um, so why have it at all? Well, that's because God wants people, Yeah, you know, and for him to eliminate evil, he would have to eliminate people as we know it. That's right. And, you know, we've said this every week so far and it's becoming a theme, like your view of God and your view of his love by sending Jesus to solve some of these issues, right, um, is going to go a long way with how you view these situations when they arrive in your life. And so being prepared ahead of time, we we mentioned that a while ago, but that was a big thing that came up in our group too, was in the moment, it's tough to make these decisions. So you have to make these decisions long before they actually happen, you know, just to reiterate. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I'm going to, this is something that I've wrestled with. So I don't know if I a thousand percent agree with what I'm about to say, but it's something okay. I've wrestled with. There's a guy named Alvin Plantinga who pr- proposes this idea, what he calls the fortunate fall. And so he asked the question, he doesn't start with why evil, but he starts with what's the best thing that's ever happened in the history of the world? What is it? Like, y'all take a guess. Jesus. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's God becoming flesh. Mm-hmm. Would he have had to do that if the fall had not happened? Yeah. So it's interesting to think it's, about. So you think about that. And and so that's why there were a guy like him comes up. He calls it the fortunate fall um, <laughs> because of the fall. God saying the best possible world that could be created is a world in which I, my son takes on flesh and becomes a human and dies um, for their redemption and then raises again. And, and then the world, the world that we have. Yeah. Well, that sounds weird, it, 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 you does, know, yeah. and, and I can understand it from like that all makes sense. Uh, I can understand it from a mental standpoint, but man, from an emotional standpoint, I'm like, I don't know if I like that, but gosh, I sure love Jesus and I love the fact that he came. <laughs> yeah. So if that's, I don't know, that's that, like I said, I don't know if I a thousand percent agree with it, but it's sure interesting. It is the I, fact that the greatest thing that's ever happened, it took the darkest moment to mm-hmm. make it happen. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I think, <laughs> I think you, you hit on the struggle with that and maybe your own tension, my own tension with that is I don't feel, I don't, I don't feel like I like that. Yes. And so, you know, even the apostle Paul in Romans, uh, and, and deals with it in several places. He was like, if, if I like anything about the law is the law showed me that I need Jesus. Mm. Yep. And, and so it reveals my brokenness, my, my fallen nature, and so it's what brought me to know him. And so I would agree on that level for sure. Um, I, I think if people are watching this today and they're struggling with this question, um, to to make a decision ahead of time may not be an option for them right now. Yeah, they they can make in the middle of it. They can make a decision right now. Yes, they yes, can. you can. And to to I, I will I will stake my life on it uh, and have for a little while now that Jesus is totally hope for people who don't have hope. That's right. And he is healing for those who need healing. He is God's greatest blessing to humanity. And I'm telling you, the the cross of Jesus changed everything in terms of being being able to be made right with God. Mm -hmm. But the resurrection of Jesus broke the back of everything that could ever come against us. And now we're in a waiting period in terms of yeah. of the ultimate redemption and restoration where there will be, our, our tears will be wiped away. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we're in it, the already, but not yet. Ex- exactly. That, and that's really tough to live in. Yeah. So that, fun. <laughs> that creates a, a natural tension uh, in time and, and in, in our emotions and how, you know, what we think and feel. But I, I'm telling you, there are millions of people around the world that go through horrific things every year. And those who have Jesus in their life make it through exponentially better than those who do not. Yeah. And I, I want to, you know, a good way to, for us to end this is just to encourage everybody, including all of us, mm-hmm. the tension we feel discussing this topic is the same tension everybody feels. There's practical tension. There's logical tension. There's emotional tension. There's a lot of tension that, is involved in this and that's okay. And and to wrestle with that, like Seth said a while ago, is really important. And so let's let's continue to wrestle together. Don't wrestle on your own. That Mm-mm. can get a little bit hairy. We don't want to do that. But let's wrestle together and let's try to figure some things out. So I just 
want to say thank you guys for joining first take this week it was a it was a good discussion uh we really appreciate you if if you guys like this type of content and you want more of it make sure that you subscribe to all of our places where you can get it the first moss bluff podcast spotify the website you know a lot of different places that you can get it on youtube uh comment any other questions that you might have also share it yeah i mean if you know someone who's going through something and maybe they can benefit from this please share it uh make sure that they can hear it as well so hey we love you we'll be back next week to answer the question of why christians are so intolerant we'll have fun next we'll have a little more fun a little bit lighter but it'll be (laughs) great yeah so we love y'all we'll see y'all later